Alrighty, so we are going to go to our first set of examples, um, problems. Uh, so this will just be part one, or sorry, after the intro, yeah, part one. Okay. And so our first example is going to ask us to find four things. Okay, so we need to find the vertex, the focus, the directrix, and the axis of symmetry. Okay, so we have x minus 3 squared equals the quantity y plus 4. So I want you to just look at that, take two seconds, and let me know if it's going to be a problem that's going to face up and down or if it's a problem that's going to face left or right. And then after you said thought about up and down or left or right, then think about whether it's a positive, so it's going to go up or right, or it's a negative, so it's going to go down or left. So go ahead and pick which kind of parabola is this. All right, hopefully we said up. That is the correct answer. So the reason why I know it's up is because my x term is squared. So remember, x squared is like the parabolas you've always learned about. And those parabolas go up and those parabolas go down. The reason why I know it's positive, it's kind of slightly tricky here. Hopefully you notice there's nothing in front of the yp that should have been right there. And this space is always a 4p. Okay, the 4p tells you whether that's positive or negative. Okay, and so in this case, um, what's not there is really a positive one. So I know since it's positive that this graph is going to be going up. All right, so our first step is to go ahead and to find the vertex. So our vertex, okay, remember x still goes with the x part of the vertex, y goes with the y part of the vertex. So I'm at a minus x minus 3, so that means it's a positive 3. Okay, and I have a y plus 4, so that means it's a negative 4. So if I'm going to go ahead and graph this guy, oops, I did that bad, and go right, 1, 2, 3, and down, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's going this way, and it's going to come positively going up. Okay, so remember you're practicing or learning how to tell the difference of up and down, because x is squared, or left and right would be because y is squared. Okay, so vertex is easy. You're just going to pull that straight off the equation. You don't think much about that one. Focus and directress, though, is a little bit different, okay? So those don't ever just, like, straight up appear in our equation, okay? What they come from is the p-value, okay? So remember, p is the distance from the vertex to the focus and the distance from the vertex to the directrix. And here is my directrix right there. And my focus will be somewhere right in that mess. Okay, so if I'm thinking, oh, also if you just want to know how I know where these things are, focus is always inside the parabola, directrix is always on the outside. Okay, so focus inside in between the U and the directrix is just the exact opposite direction. Okay, um, so what I need to find is what my p-value is. Right now I know 4p, it goes in front of the y, the y thing. So I know 4p is equal to 1. So I'm going to have 4p equal to 1. So p is equal to a fourth. So I know that this distance right here is 1 fourth. And this distance right here is also 1 fourth. Okay, they're equal. Remember, uh, the points are all equidistant from the vertex and the directrix. Or sorry, the focus and the directrix. Um, so what I need to do is to find this point right here. I have to take this point and go up a fourth. Okay, so to find the focus, I'm going to take it and go up a fourth. So what I'm going to do right now is my focus is at the point 3 comma negative 4, but I need to go up one fourth. So I need to add a fourth to the y value. So I'm starting at the vertex and I'm moving up a fourth. Okay, so that's going to end up becoming 3 and negative 3.5. Seven, five. So that is where my focus is. My directrix, on the other hand, is a line. Okay, so we need to write it as um, an equation. 
of a line. So think about this, this is a horizontal line and horizontal lines are always y equals something, okay? And so what I'm doing to get this line is I'm starting at this vertex and I'm going down. So the reason why I added the 1 4 to the y value is because up goes with y and up would be a plus. And now I'm going to go down, so I'm going to take that negative 4 and I'm going to subtract it. So it's y equals negative 4 minus a fourth, which will just be y equals negative 4.25. All right, so that's how we find our focus and our directrix. Okay, so you're gonna find the p-value and then add or subtract it depending on where it is on the graph. I would always highly recommend sketching a picture of what the problem is, or if you can do that mentally in your head, that's fine, but just knowing how to get into both of those, okay, off the vertex. You have to know where the vertex is and then you can find it. And then the very last thing is called the axis of symmetry. All right, and so go way, way, way back to uh, Algebra 1, Algebra 2 even. You did axis of symmetry constantly, okay? Um, take a second and type into Edpuzzle what you think the axis of symmetry is. All right, hopefully you said it's the imaginary line that cuts the parabola in half. That's the, like, common thing we call it. Okay, it's that imaginary line that's going to split it, that the parabola, if I flip it over, reflect it over this line, it would just line up right next to itself. Okay, and so how we're going to just find this is it's going to go straight through the vertex. The axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. Okay, and so what I care about now is the directrix was a horizontal line, so it's y equals. The axis of symmetry in this case is a vertical line, so I know it's going to be and x equals. And right now, my x value is going right through 3. That's where my vertex is at. So it's x equals 3. Okay. Now, be very careful because this example was an upward or downward facing parabola. would have very similar ways to do it. Axis of symmetry is always going to be x equals. Directrix will be y equals. The focus you'll be adding or subtracting to the y value. Things like that. What we're gonna do now is an example of when it's no longer up or down, it's left and right. And so things are gonna change slightly, but if you draw the picture, nothing changes. You see it visually just the same as you would before. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go to another example and we're gonna do the exact same thing. Okay, so we have y minus one squared equals two times x plus five. So looking at this, hopefully you notice, oh, y squared here. So that means I have a left or a right. I'm going to go find where my p-value would be, and it's going to be right here with a 2. So that's a positive 2. So that means I want a positive between left and right, which means it's going to be right. All right, so let's start with our vertex. Be careful this time. Remember that first part, the x value of the vertex goes with the x value here. So I have x plus 5, which means it is a negative 5, and I have a y minus 1, which means it's a positive 1. So we're going back 5 and up 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 1, and we are opening to the right, because our p-value is positive. Okay, so uh, focus is somewhere in this mess, directrix is outside over here somewhere. Okay. Alrighty, so what I know is I need to solve for p, and so this little mess right here is what 4p is equal to. So I have 4p equals 2, so divide by 4 and p is 2 fourths, which is just 1 half. So I know by definition from my vertex to my focus is a half, and from my vertex to my directrix is 1 half. So let's start with the focus, okay? So this time, instead of going up or left, or up or down, we're gonna go right or left. So now I'm, I'm affecting the x value of my coordinate, not the y, all right? So starting at negative five to one, and I'm gonna go right a half, so right would mean plus. So I would have negative five plus a half, comma one. And so that's going to turn into negative, ooh, not negative 5, negative 4.5, comma 1. 
Okay, so I added a half, so I'm going to the right. Um, I think Alex will let you write decimals, but if it doesn't, just write negative four and a half. Write a mixed number, or you can go ahead and convert it to um, an improper fraction. I don't think it really matters. And I'm not gonna care either. However, Alex accepts it, um, it's good for me. Okay, the directrix, on the other hand, is no longer a horizontal line. This time the directrix is a vertical line. And we know vertical lines are x equals something. So right here, I was at negative 5, and then I moved to the left a half. So left would be subtracting. So I'm going to do negative 5 minus a half, which we knew would be x equals negative 5.5. All right, hopefully we're feeling okay so far with this. All right, the next thing we need to do is, um, just last thing, is find the axis of symmetry. Okay, and so once again, it's changed compared to the last problem. Last problem was up or down, so the axis of symmetry is this way. And this one, it's actually going to be this horizontal line right through the middle, okay? It's that imaginary line that the parabola could fold over, and it always, always goes through the vertex. So since it is a horizontal line, I know it's a y equals, and I know my vertex is at positive 1, so it's going to be y equals 1. The height, I should say, of the vertex is 1, okay? The up or down value. All right. Hopefully we're feeling okay, so you can take a break for a little bit um, and then come back and watch the next video.